stay on refine. This is paradise in my opinion. We trail off the beaten path and snowshoe through a northwest <laughs> winter wonderland. But a warning, it's a lot harder than it looks. That was not it. That was not it. Plus. You gotta wear that tonight, okay? Yeah. Seattle yeah. Look fine. yeah. <laughs> tight, tight class, right? <laughs> the Seattle artist making a name for himself with many masterpieces. It's been a pleasure. I wish I could say the same. And most of his jokes are making fun of me, so <laughs> I have to laugh at myself. The star of ABC's new show, Whiskey Cavalier, talks about chemistry with her co-star. Shadowy Fine starts now. Hi, everybody. I'm Garth Swanson, and welcome to Seattle Refine. You know, it's that time of year when people start to get a little bit antsy. They're looking for their next adventure, and luckily, the Northwest is a gold mine when it comes to perfect vacation spots. But it doesn't get much better than our sponsor, Visit Ben. As Refine's Brandon Bernstead shows us, the mountain town is much more than just skiing. It's the perfect mix of world-class amenities and outdoor adventure. This is Bend, Oregon, the mountain town that has it all. I mean, one quick look around us right now is baby. Why one should come up here in the wintertime. Um, Bend is fabulous. Located just a half hour from Bend, Mount Bachelor is one of the best ski resorts in North America. But the perfect way to explore this winter wonderland is in a pair of snowshoes. On a day like today, um, there's virtually no snow in Bend, but you come up here and there's eight feet of snow underneath our feet. And this is, this is the playground. This is paradise in my opinion. I hit the backcountry with Dave Nissen, owner of the acclaimed Wanderlust Tours. There's so much more than what meets the eye out here. So we're cruising around, uh, we're jumping off lava flows, we're running down hills, we're quietly going through the forest. <laughs> you! Oh! I went down! I'm back up. That was not it. That was not it. You kind of landed on your back. I, that was pretty pretty. <laughs> pretty would not be the word I would use. But it's a heck of a lot of fun. After my mountain adventure, I needed a pick-me-up. So we headed back to town to check out the Riff Cold Brewed Tap Room. We think that this is the nation's, if not the world's, first tap room exclusively dedicated to cold brewed coffee innovation. At Riff, they're taking cold brewed coffee to the next level, experimenting with different flavors and levels of caffeine. And we have a great selection of our coffees from nitrogenated nitro coffee to regular coffee to CBD cold brew to a hot nitro coffee. If you're here during the nighttime, we have great coffee cocktails. We really want to, to push people on what uh, they're familiar with with coffee and then to expand what they, they know of coffee all at the same time. If you're looking for an incredible, luxurious meal, there's no shortage of options all over Bend. You don't expect um, the level of restaurants that we have here, um, the level of talent that's in this town. Um, you know, you can go anywhere from a, a food truck to a brewery to a fine dining restaurant like this, and there's always a good meal to be had. At Boss Taurus, celebrated chef George Morris sources the highest quality beef from around the globe. We house two uh, different varieties of A5 Wagyu beefs. This is from Miyazaki. Um, I'm going to spin this around and I'm going to show you the other, which is uh, Hokkaido. Morris is also the mastermind behind the upcoming Miyagi ramen. For us, he's preparing one of Boss Taurus's most popular appetizers, Hudson Valley Foie Gras Terrine. This is a cranberry gastrique. So we put that down first. Um, second, we're going to take our foie gras terrine, so we'll make a nice clean cut. And this is a little bit of a toasted pistachio. And we'll turn the smoking gun on, torch the maple wood chips, just like that, and we're going to fill the dome with smoke. Pull that out, and then the, uh, the foie gras terrine smokes as it goes out to the table. I want every guest to, to walk out of here, um, you know, really impressed with the experience they've had. Um, we want to blow everybody's expectations out of the water when they come in here. A stunning end to a spectacular adventure in beautiful Bend, Oregon. For Seattle Refined, I'm Brandon Bernstead. To learn more about Visit Bend and how to plan your next getaway, head to seattlerefined.com. If you want to get away, sometimes all you need is a good night out at the theater, and a Broadway classic is back in town. 
The first ever Broadway revival of Cats is coming to the Paramount. The original Cats ran for 18 years and has been seen by 73 million people worldwide. Basically, Cats is iconic. It runs from March 26th through March 31st. If you were a teen in the 1980s, chances are you had a pin collection. From bands to brands, they were the coolest must-have accessories. Well, they're back, baby. Refines Malia Karlinski met a local artist who's at the forefront of creating these pieces of small but mighty merch. Porchlight Coffee is located in Seattle's Capitol Hill neighborhood. Just like its name, this spot has a warm, cozy, and slightly quirky feel. It's a neighborhood um, stop and just one of those places, one of the places where you just kind of fall more and more in love with. Zach Bulletin is the owner. What's the vibe like here? Uh, pretty calm, relaxed, even at busy times. It's not super rowdy or uh, high intensity. Even though you're selling coffee? Yes. <laughs> at this spot, you can get a variety of things, from a velvety latte to some vintage vinyl. So what labels do you carry here? Uh, local labels, we carry Sub Pop and Barsook Records, and then a variety of national labels that are kind of like punk or indie and soul records. Creativity is everywhere here. In fact, Zach himself is also an artist. For most of my life, I've been, I guess I would technically be an artist, but no one was paying me to design for them until a few years ago. His design aesthetic has a retro feel. I'm inspired by a lot of like mid-century design work and a lot of that. My dad was very big into the Seattle World's Fair and a lot of that was kind of the futuristic mid-century illustration style. And I think it's really fun and kind of translates well to stuff that I do like band posters or band merch or design for here. One of his favorite things to create are enamel pins. Although small in scale, they make a big impact. I think it's just accessible for everyone and that the cost is low for the business and the cost is low for the customer. It's kind of cool. Yeah, and it's fun. Some people have them all over jackets, all over backpacks. He showed us a few of his designs. And this was for Molly Moon's ice cream. This is for Seattle camera company Glazers. They've been around close to 100 years and did a little film roll for them. This is one I did, which is pretty obvious for Cliff Bar. So Zach, do you think you could fight it in your heart to make a Seattle refined pin? I think so. Do you need to know about our show? I know enough <laughs> about it. <laughs> he doesn't even want any input, he knows, he knows. He went to work trying to capture the fun feel of Refined in a pin. But you guys wanted the show's name on the pin plus something representative of Seattle. With pins, what I'll do is kind of sketch up on paper and then show clients. So I show you. I love it. I love how you have the space signal in there. That's right by our office. We were smitten with Zach's design. So we sent it off to the manufacturer. Hey, everybody. This is Zach. Then, the day the refined staff have been waiting for, a special delivery to our office. I brought you some pins, oh, one for you. Uh, that's really sharp. Even Como anchor Eric Johnson had to have one. And for you, free pins for you. You gotta wear that tonight, okay? Yeah. It's brand new tight class, right? I'm gonna go add this to my collection. It's the big moment, I've been waiting for this. Is this gonna make me cool? Very. <laughs> Younger and cooler immediately. <laughs> Don't forget the cameraman. Oh, I wouldn't. Let me, let me pin this on you. Oh, go on my man purse? Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you. These are awesome. Thanks to Zach, our refined staff was happy to put a pin in it. Literally. Malia Karlinski, Seattle Refined. For more about Zach, his art, and Porchlight Coffee, check out our website. Seattle Refined is just getting started. So tell me about these raindrop cakes. What are they? they? They look bizarre, I have to admit. We sink our teeth into a unique treat that claims to have zero calories. Plus. Mission Impossible meets Cheers. One-on-one -on -one with the star of ABC's new smash hit, Whiskey Cavalier. We'll be right back. Picture. 
back to Refine. I'm Guard Swanson. Well, it's kind of a bittersweet day for Refine's Bachelor Roundtable because cold season is officially over. And I'm looking forward to a lifetime of happiness with you. So, Cassandra and Randolph, will you accept this race? <laughs> yes. Colton chose Cassie after a rare move in Bachelor history. Instead of a surprise proposal, he sent all the women home and fought for Cassie's love. They aren't engaged, but they say they are madly in love. We couldn't be happier for them. Also, the next Bachelorette was announced, and it's Hannah B. from Colton Season. There is still plenty of drama on ABC Primetime that includes a brand new hit show that's described as Mission Impossible meets Cheers. It stars Scott Foley from Scandal and Lauren Cohan of Walking Dead. I chatted with Lauren to get the scoop on Whiskey Cavalier. Well, Lauren, thank you so much for joining us today. Tell us a little bit about Whiskey Cavalier. So Whiskey Cavalier is basically um, Mission Impossible meets Cheers and Moonlighting and everything else good. <laughs> It's a spy show, and uh, we shoot in Prague in the Czech Republic. Um, and I think that's that, that sums it up. Yeah, so if you're shooting in Prague, I mean, it, it really makes it authentic, doesn't it? Yes, we get to shoot in crazily historic locations and castles and, and churches and, and just the streets alone. Everything in Prague is picturesque, and it's also a, such a true spy backdrop. Um, so yeah it's it's definitely it keeps things moving and exciting and changing all the time it's very cool yeah it is cool and i know you play a cia operative and your code name is fiery tribune what, what does that mean um it's her initials but the fiery part is definitely very true and the tribune part is very true she speaks her mind we are all officially working together as a team led by, by me. me she's hair trigger she's impulsive but she is so passionate about the mission you were an assassin way to make it sound dirty so she's um frankie frankie is the real name and and it's uh it's a lot of fun <laughs> and you know we, we, we've done a, a lot of these interviews before and we talked to a lot of co-stars but you and scott foley your co-star seem to have really really good chemistry am, am i are you guys just faking it or is there something there no, we just get along so well. It's so lucky, you know, you don't know how you're gonna interact and you don't know that the chemistry is gonna be great on screen um, until you start working with somebody. So we're, we're just as pleasantly surprised as everybody that, that it works so well in the characters. And yeah, that's the kind of story you wanna tell. It, it, keeps, it, it keeps it really fun. You two are the perfect couple. Oh, it's like a fairy tale. <laughs> Isn't it? Good head-butting and combative and, and sometimes romantic partnership that they have. Now, we talked to Scott last week, and he says he absolutely <laughs> loves working with you because you actually pretend to laugh at his jokes. Is that true? I know. <laughs> but I genuinely laugh at them. <laughs> It's funny, Scott said that to me too. Um, yeah, yeah. Most of his jokes are making fun of me, so <laughs> I have to laugh at myself. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I tell you what, you guys have just a, a solid combo of drama and comedy, and congratulations on the show. I know you guys are going to hit it out of the park. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Whiskey Cavalier airs Wednesday nights right here on Como 4. Coming up, raindrop cake that's become Instagram worthy. Plus, where to grub on the best tots in town. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. I'm Garth Swanson. You know, we're all about finding the latest food trends here on the show. And our next obsession is something called a raindrop cake. Now, you can find the tree at the Moo Bar in South Lake Union. And it looks like it sounds. There are tons of sweet shops around Seattle, but there's one that really takes the cake when it comes to unique. The Moo Bar in South Lake Union specializes in different drinks and desserts, from a cotton candy mojito to a sparkling boba tea to a waffle ice cream dream. But it's the blob that really piqued our interest. They're called raindrop cakes. 
So tell me about these raindrop cakes. What are they? they? They look bizarre, I have to admit. Yeah, so it's like the method of the raindrop cake is zero calories. It's very, very healthy, and it's just like you eat water. So what's the history behind these things? So the mochi water is the original name, and then when it comes to you, the U.S., they translate it into a raindrop cake. So it originally is from Japan. So you know all these crazy things just always come from Japan. Oh. And people come in here and just order things made of water and that's it? Yes, because first of all, out of curiosity that they're like, what is the raindrop cake? Why? Why you make the raindrop cake out of this water? Why are we just eating water? And we actually have people love it so much, they just keep coming back and they bring more friends. And what a, like, a perfect dessert for Seattle. We get so much rain here. That's why I say, like, you know, what's better than you enjoy a little raindrop cake? You know, when you look outside the window, it has the rain outside. Of course, Instagram loves these raindrop cakes, too. People come in just to take a photo of one. When you go on our Instagram, a lot of guys who do come in here and describe it as, you know, like, it look like poopies. <laughs> okay, moving on at the Moo Bar. Regardless of what you think this looks like, the key to these raindrop cakes is apparently powder. And this is the secret that set everything right here. So you're not going to tell me about this. You're just going to say it's powder. Yes, it's powder. It's FDA approved. It's your secret sauce. Yes, it's a secret powder. All right, then, can we try these? I'm super curious. Okay, can I take a bite of this one? Yes. This one, it's just clear, but today I make the milk tea flavor. So, which is instead of just plain water, you eat into it, it tastes, it has a hint of milk tea. Mm -hmm. This one is a Thai tea. This is my favorite. Here we go. There you go. Whoa. It busted it's, it's like in gone. Your, yeah. It's in my mouth and it's gone. And again, this is one that's supposed to taste like what? Ube. It has ube, coconut egg flavor. Wow. That totally different. Completely 100% different. Yes. And I love it because it's gone. Yes. It tastes so good. Jordy, come here. This is Jordan. She's our intern. Hi. She's a rock star. All right, try this. Tell me okay. if you like it. What do you think? Wow. That's like really unique. I like it because it's it's like the banishing dessert. It's just like you don't have to do any exercise because <laughs> zero really? calories. Now you said Instagram. Pick one up. Let's get an Instagram photo right here. This Look one. right at the camera. Ready? <laughs> To learn more about Moo Bar and the Raindrop Cake, head to SeattleRefine.com. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. I'm Guard Swanson. You know, there are two kinds of people in this world, French fry people and tater tot people. I'm kind of a tot guy. That's why we decided to search Seattle for the top tots in town. Fortunately, no one knows tots better than refined super eater John Prentice. First stop, Buckley's on Lower Queen Anne, where the tots, if you can believe it, are considered a healthy choice. Sweet potato tots. It's just kind of a niche menu item, and probably we're one of the only ones in the city to carry it. What's, what's so special about it? Chipotle Ranch is made in-house, and it, what happens is when you get the sweetness of the tater tot, coupled with the just a slight spice from the Chipotle Ranch. It's a really nice, uh, spicy, sweet kind of flavor. Our next stop, Lunchbox Laboratory in South Lake Union, where the tots are fried to perfection. They're amazing. The waiter actually talked me into them. A house specialty called Gavacho's Tachos. So the tachos is our fried tots with the mac and cheese, sour cream, Satan's I, Tears I ketchup. Yep, yep, and then uh, bacon. Chopped bacon and green onions. But the real highlight here may be the selection of tot toppings. These are some of my favorite sauces. Hey, Prentice, don't fill up on all those tachos. We still have one more stop to make. I think the tater tot is just that all-American deal. This is Tyler. He's the executive chef at Radiator Whiskey on Pike Place Market, and he calls his tots dirty. So we do sunny side up with the eggs, so it just barely cooks the white through. And then when it comes to the table, the first thing you want to do is cut right in the middle of it. All that uh, yolks runs into the gravy, and it'd be dirty, delicious pull of tots. You know, I've never paired gravy with eggs before, but that is delicious. They're so popular, they make about 150 orders every single night. That is fantastic. Thanks, man. Got it. 
Did we miss your top tots? Email us at hello at seattlerefined.com and let us know. All right, that's going to do for today's show. I'm Gart Swanson. Thank you for joining us here on Seattle Refined. We'll see you next time.